everyone, welcome to theCUBE. Special announcement here, exclusive coverage covering Oracle NetSuite Suite World with some special news. We're here with Jason Maynard, Senior Vice President of Marketing and Strategy at Oracle NetSuite, and Jim McGeever, EVP, Executive Vice President at Oracle NetSuite. Uh, thanks for joining this special uh, CUBE coverage. Thanks, Thank great you. to be here. So we got some exclusive news uh, around uh, Suite World um, going on. So let's get down and dirty. So you got four major announcements going on. Or, uh, Oracle NetSuite Global, Vertical Intelligence Suite, and New Suite Commerce. Um, Let's get into the hard news. What's, what's the big story around the news? Uh, the big story is we're going global and in a big way. Well, it's one of the big advantages of the Oracle acquisition. Uh, we could never afford it to go to as many countries as fast as we can. And now with Oracle, we're really being able to go really fast. And as a result, we're building a lot of new international features. So 2018, we've really turned the development ship to build out deep localizations for most of the major economies around the world. NetSuite's had a great track record, obviously everyone kind of has well documented history, obviously now with Oracle. Mm -hmm. What's the stride look like? What's, what are you guys hitting? You guys are hitting a stride. What's mm -hmm. it look like? What's different about it, if anything? What's the big highlight here at Sweet World? Well, we've really put the, the foot on the gas pedal. So we're actually growing much faster now than we were when we were independent. And a lot of it is due to the international growth. I mean, for example, in China, China, we didn't have a market, a presence. It's now our fourth biggest market after only a year and that's just starting. It's amazing how fast uh, that's growing. Talk about the international global piece because you know, global has become kind of like a, a whitewash term for some, but it's mm -hmm. hard to do, especially China. You mentioned that one. So you have China and then the mm -hmm. rest of international. Yep. There are issues with cloud. You've got regions, you've mm -hmm. got data privacy, obviously GDPR is on the horizon, mm -hmm. uh, and it's got some, some, some teeth to it, I would argue relatively you know, sharp in some areas and not in others. But, it's a challenging dynamic, but the upside is it's a very uh, lucrative opportunity. What's different about international now than say just five, six years ago? Oh, there's two major differences. So one is the data privacy rules, GDPR. I mean, that's just amazing how, what an impact that has on businesses. And also the data residency rules. So we're having to build out data centers around the globe, which we never would have had to do before. Now this is, Thankfully, we have a company that has data centers around the world, so it's becoming a lot cheaper and easier for us to do that, but that's really tough for a business to be able to do that themselves. So, you know, the theme I want to get out there is, is that, you know, people want to do more with less. That's a classic consolidation mm -hmm. uh, message. And there's some consolidation going on when you look at cloud and how people are trying to figure out cloud mm -hmm. on-premise on and in the cloud, but it's not a consolidation market. It's a massive growth market. Yes. Jason, what, is, what does more mean? I mean, people want more. They might have to do with less, but there's an upside mm -hmm. growth uh, component. How are you guys talking of that one challenge? Because there's challenges and there's opportunities at the same mm -hmm. time. You know, it's, it's an interesting time. I think a lot of folks say it's easier than ever to start a business, um, but, the, but the flip side is it's harder than ever to actually scale and grow. So when we are out talking to our customers and we're, we're getting you know, into what they're trying to solve, the biggest issue they have is how do I overcome this, this issue of breaking these barriers of growth? So it could be going global, it could be doing more with less, right? How do I automate my business so I can reinvest into the things that are going to make me more successful, like acquiring new customers? Um, those are the type of the challenges that we see out there. It's more with less, get me to where I need to be, and uh, frankly, stop doing the things that are sort of counterproductive and inefficient yeah. and, and really drive top line. I think that's one nuance that, that's missed a lot in the analysis is that it's not so much more with less, it's more efficiency with cloud. You get more mm -hmm. leverage in software. Right. I and mean, that's always been the case with software economics. Mm -hmm. How does that translate to the business strategy for you guys as you guys go global? Talk about some of the news around the, uh, the verticals, the vertical sure. integration, because that's going to be a big part of it with either the developer community and or you know, your partner ecosystems. Sure, so what we're seeing is, if you look at our product and what people use, uh, when we looked at our customer base, customers who are international, Customers who, are vert who use vertical features grow much faster than customers who are single domestic. And so we looked across the board, and so what we're really focused on is how we can help those companies grow even faster. So how do you go international quicker? But every business is not a generic business, so they all have these vertical features, some have inventory, some have projects, and so what they really need is features that can help them execute their business better. So we go deep by vertical. In fact, our whole company is organized vertically, our sales teams, our development teams, and so when we go to market, we go vertically, and so we're doing some really cool stuff, especially in the product-based area, uh, a new supply tab, uh, control center, which really helps enable uh, people to get product to their customers on time. 
Well, I'd like to get both of you to weigh in on, on the hard question. I'm going to bring, bring the heat now. <laughs> okay. Um, everyone right. wants to know, okay, what's it like with Oracle? Is that helping you? Is it hurting you? Um, Oracle has a reputation. They're moving to the cloud very quickly. Mm -hmm. But again, they're an incumbent. Okay, in the old in the cloud way. Mm -hmm. So, and the, you know, Herd's, Herd's putting up some numbers. But you can talk to folks at Amazon, like, whoa, you know, the Oracle. So there's a lot of lot of uncertainty around who's going to be the uh, modern player. So the question is, how are you guys working in that environment? I see Oracle's numbers are up. They're moving to the cloud mm -hmm. model. They're sassifying at a pace that they're moving as fast as they can. But you guys have always had a, a different perspective. How is the NetSuite Oracle relationship working and how do you talk to customers about that? Sure, so we're, they run us really independently. So we're a global business unit inside of Oracle. So all sales, development, marketing, product, all report up through me, Evan and Jason, and we report into the CEO of Oracle. So we really run pretty independently. The only other thing I'll add, so really not that much has changed other we get to leverage a lot of their global scale, and as Mark Hurd says, and try to avoid some of the negatives of that scale. Um, but they are all in on cloud. This is, when you're in a meeting with the senior leadership at Oracle, it's not a fake thing, it's not a, um, a marketing message. They truly believe at their core that in the cloud or that everything's moving to the cloud. So there's, we're, we get the same um, incentives to sell to an Oracle on-premise customer as we do to an SAP on-premise customer. Jason, to add to that, I want to get your perspective. We were talking before we came on around the scale piece yeah. that Jim just mentioned. Talk about the, um, the, the profile of the kind of customers that you guys have it's here at Sweet World. Is the profile of your customer changing? Take a minute to explain who is the NetSuite customer? Because the global thing is interesting. If you're a growing, soon to be multinational or you're already a multinational uh, company, it, this matters. So, and then the scale matters as well. So what is the profile of the customer and how does that help, how does that weave into the Oracle um, yeah. scale? So we have over 40,000 organizations globally running NetSuite. Um, it's a pretty interesting mix. Obviously a lot of small, mid-sized companies and we have a few, uh, you know, good decent percentage of our, our base are multi-billion dollar companies. Um, we see an interesting, I think, dynamic, which is the most successful NetSuite customers are the ones that have gone global. Um, they grow faster, like Jim said, than, than the domestic only. I think the, I think the one other hallmark that I would point out to the NetSuite customer, of the cu customer base, um, you see sort of an innovative group of, of entrepreneurs um, so we see all sorts of great stories with these customers. Um, you know, in, in Jim's keynote, uh, Kara Golden, the founder of Hint, right? She started off with, a, with the mission to stop folks from drinking soda water and drink actual water. Yeah. And started with, you know, 10 years ago and is now on, a, on an amazing trajectory. So we find... You guys get a lot of growth companies. Yeah, we get a lot of the growers. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of the, really kind of the entrepreneurs who start small with us and then scale with us all the way to becoming a multi-billion dollar And this company. is where the international piece matters, right? Oh, yeah. this, so let's mm -hmm. talk about that and then we'll move on to the, the, uh, the next set of news. So um, if I'm a growing company and we're expanding crazy, I care about localization. I care about mm -hmm. um, data in regions, certainly cloud, mm -hmm. as you mentioned mentioned Oracle's uh, really serious about how they are. They care about regions, this is an issue. Talk about the, the benefits of me, a growing company, how do I take advantage of the localization? What do you guys offer? What's the playbook? <laughs> Uh, it's, we just make it easy. I mean, our whole focus is if you're a business, it's hard enough to go international and figure out your value proposition and what makes you unique and what makes you differentiated. The last thing you need to be worried about are all your IT systems and spending all time on infrastructure and selling it all up. So our kind of job is we'll, let, we'll just take care of that. If you want to go to Germany, you will literally flip a switch inside the system and you have a German enabled uh, application. And what's the alternative if I don't go with you guys? You have to go go find someone in Germany to go buy an application, install it, then you implement it, then you integrate it. I mean, that's a multi-month, if not a year process. And expensive. Very you expensive. You got to find people. Yeah. yeah. You got to know the nuances, the local issues. Right. <laughs> and so you've got to learn all that. And you know, we come fully localized, and we don't do it just in a way that is, um, it's a starting point. We have all the German tax forms built into the system. When you log on to NetSuite, and you, once you flip this switch, you go to the page, all the German tax forms are there and we will automatically fill them out for you. Chase, I want to get your perspective because local marketing is a big deal. Mm -hmm. You guys are in hundreds of countries, I know that from, from doing the research and watching you guys grow. But where do you have actual presence and where does presence matter? Can you just highlight yeah. the NetSuite? Because I think this is going to where people are going to want to know, okay, there's hundreds of countries out there but where are you, where's the core yeah. going to be? No, so it, it's, it's an interesting point because it's, I, I think it's, it's not just about product, 
right? It's not just about having a product that's localized for a specific country. It's about having everything else, right? It's having making sure the support is in the local language. It's making sure that we have people who speak the language, making sure we have facilities, sales, service people, having a localized data You guys center. are committed to that. We are 100% oh, yeah. committed. And this is, you know, you asked the question earlier about what, what has been the benefit of Oracle. I don't think, as a standalone company, we'd have been able to pull off what we're pulling off and announcing this week um, without the backing of and the Oracle resources because they, they have the global reach that we can easily tap into. So when we do local now, we're doing it with everything that a, that a customer needs to be successful. Okay, so the next set of news I want to dive into the hard news is the new sweet commerce kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. The sweet success for sweet commerce. It's a new e-commerce solution that gives customers the freedom to grow and evolve their digital commerce business. Um, so this is basically commerce. You're talking about mm -hmm. like doing business. Yep. Yep. What is this news about? Give us the quick summary and let's discuss. So our previous commerce product was actually a very advanced. We actually started at the top first. We uh, enabled you to touch every pixel on the page, customizing any way, shape, or form you wanted. What we've done with Sweet Commerce is now we've taken it and come out with an entirely pre-packaged, pre-built website. So you can be up and running with a very complex, fully featured website in 30 days or less. And it's point and click choose, and this is not going to a basic colors and theme choices. We have complex features that enable you to run your business. So you could come to us and we will have you up and running with commerce enabled, integrated with your back office with less than 30 days. Jason, I can see two use cases for this. One mm -hmm. is, you know, I need turnkey. Guys, here's mm -hmm. the keys to the kingdom, build it for me. I'll give you all my raw materials, we're up and running, classic you know, turnkey. Then there's the um, more of the DevOps cloud model, which is, hey, I need access to APIs, I have my own mm -hmm. development yep. team. Okay, how do you talk to both those? And there's also a hybrid, there's an intersection of both those. So there's, there's two modes of use cases. How do you yeah. guys address no, the it's, developer? It's, it's, a, it's, it's interesting. I think, I think the way we look at it is we can be the first system you buy, and we can also be the last system you ever buy. Right, and, and that's that freedom to grow and evolve. So you may want to start off with us because you're an emerging retailer and you're launching just in the US, mm -hmm. but as you evolve to six more countries in a year and a half because you've got the hit product or that you're, you're selling, and you want to start to then expand your sophistication, then we can migrate you to some of the more advanced capabilities. But what, we, what we're delivering today is that ability to have a packaged, out of the cloud, easier to use, on-ramp, to get the value out of NetSuite. And the horizontally scalable cloud is obviously what developers like. Mm -hmm. What's the developer story here? Can you guys share the developer perspective for your customer if I have a team of developers? Sure, so we're using the exact same technology. So Sweet Commerce and Sweet Commerce Advanced, it's the exact same technology. One, we've, we've been the developer, had not pre-packaged it and delivered to the customer. But if you start with that, you can instantly switch over and take over the development yourself. So either stay with us, we'll work with you, we'll develop it, or you can just take that as a starting point and develop it going forward. Yeah, awesome. two, literally I think something is 75, 80% of our customers literally customize NetSuite in some shape or form. So you can imagine- so you totally open to like developers oh, and yeah, yeah. developer yeah. Yeah. There's a platform as a service offering inside of NetSuite, which is something that the, the, as customers involve and grow, they tend to consume and use more of those platformy features. So one of the things I'm reading here in the news that I want to dive into that I like, um, um, you know, I like like uh, I like new things. So mm -hmm. the latest additions you guys are doing um, have this concept called micro verticals um, mm -hmm. that span a variety of industries. So that means data potentially could fly around. Certainly in cybersecurity, we were covering at RSA just recently. The role of data sharing is huge. You obviously, got the other end on the policy mm -hmm. side of you know da <laughs> data protection. So you you can't have you got to have a combination of data sharing to make machine learning and make you know, some mm -hmm. of these new AI capabilities work at the same time, you got to have policies around that. Um, but these micro verticals have to operate in a new way. So what does a micro vertical mean? And how are you helping customers saying, you know, I play in a little bit of media, I play a little bit in financial, mm -hmm. you know, have a lot of different requirements that may cross verticals. How do you guys handle that? Well, we started off with industry. So we used to think of wholesale distribution as a whole series of vertical features. You need a warehouse, you need order management. There's all these things that you needed in order to make that work. And now we're going into verticals within that, such as food and beverage or health and beauty. And then when you get down food and beverage, now you have cold storage. And so that's where we get to the micro vertical level. And the requirements there are actually quite different than you may get from a generic health and beauty uh, vertical. So what we build are those micro vertical features to enable this business. So you guys drill down into the verticals oh, yeah. and yeah. segment them down mm -hmm. and rather than some general purpose 
right. solution that's mm -hmm. you know <laughs> trying to hit. So there's some requirements changing. And all the regulatory and compliant requirements that go with those micro verticals, those are engineered as part and of the process. And what's the impact of the customer? Talk about the customer impact. What's benefit for them? Um, they get pro better product, they're happier, they get it quicker, and they get it cheaper. So it's kind of the more we do and the less you do, the happier the customer's going to be. All right, philosophical question now. This is really what customers want. They mm -hmm. want to have, they want to feel like it's a personal experience, mm -hmm. customized for their business. How do you make that work in this new cloud world? What's the secret sauce that you guys bring to the table mm -hmm. to make customers get that flexibility, the agility, I'll see the scale of Oracle helps on, on the mm -hmm. foundational level, but as you guys roll out the next suites, next generation, uh, customer environment, what's, what's the secret? Well, we've always had a platform, a deep platform, and so people have always customized our product. So we're using the exact same customization technologies to deliver these micro verticals that customers and developers have been able to do for years. So it's just leveraging what everyone can do to make it a better solution for those customers. Final, qu final question now, uh, you know, I mentioned machine learning and AI before. Mm -hmm. uh, so the intelligence suite is news here. Mm -hmm. Let's get into that. If you're not doing AI, you're not relevant these days. Everyone's throwing AI around like it's like a, oh, we're AIing this, so it's machine learning. The, but this is real. I mean, you see, mm -hmm. you, software has to drive uh, efficiencies. Mm -hmm. There's scale involved in software. Machine learning and artificial intelligence is a great path to mm -hmm. operationalize and automate uh, and create insights. Mm -hmm. So what is Intelligence Suite about? Can you share? the news there. Sure, so we're not building a generic AI tool. Oracle's got a massive investment in that and we'll, I'm sure at some point we'll leverage it. We're actually looking at very specific use cases with our application that customers can use right now. And so we're actually taking um, solutions such as what is the quickest way to get your inventory to your customer and using some machine learning to help actually route and pick the right inventory items in the right location to get the quickest delivery time to your customer. So we're taking very specific use cases and we're building that intelligence in around that. We're not coming out with a generic AI tool that will solve all potential questions, answer all potential questions, even if you don't know what the questions are. That will come a little bit later, but right now this so is So you guys really are taking the low-hanging fruit, drilling down in known use cases yep. for your customers mm -hmm. and bringing those, that kind of automation yep. to the and table. It, we basically take the attitude of machines and humans together are generally a better answer than yep. either by themselves. So we'll give you all the choices and give you the recommendations and let you pick the way you want to go. Jason, how do you market that to a customer? Because this is really, I think, a big point. Humans and machines clearly are involved. You look at all the success of machine learning, mm -hmm. this is now becoming known. You look at Facebook in front of uh, the United States uh, lawmakers, you know, they don't even know what, what, how Facebook works. <laughs> yeah. So you know, you got an enterprise, they're learning about data. They mm -hmm. want real answers, and they yeah. need to have it baked out for them. I, I, th I think AI and machine learning could perhaps be you know, the new planking, the most overused, overhyped, you know, thing out there right now and every vendor has to come up with a like a, a, a sort of a perceived AI strategy. So I think it's overwhelming for a lot of customers because at the end of the day these customers are trying to figure out how do I solve really specific problems. They don't have AI problems, they have tangible business problems. And so we took this approach to build this from scratch inside of NetSuite. We didn't acquire, you know, some random startup and try and plug and graph that onto NetSuite. We built it, you know, with the the same thought process around how do we solve that problem, make it more efficient. So our conversations with our customers are not about technology, they're about, hey, how do we get you, you know, better turns on your, your inventory. How do we solve a specific business problem? And that resonates, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's what they a know. shiny new toy kind of thing. Hey, look, we got some new tools. And there's, there's a place for that kind of, it's, it, if you, from a developer standpoint, I can see it being a great sandbox. Mm -hmm. You guys are taking a different approach. You're going at known customer problems mm -hmm. that you can automate away and create insights. Is that right? That's, yeah, that's absolutely. It. To wrap up, I want to get the thoughts of Sweet World. What's going on here? What's the main conversations? What do you guys, um, promoting, what's the message, what's some of the conversations, and what's next for, for NetSuite? Yeah, the biggest conversation is customers talking to each other about how they grow and scale their business. And so we try and create a, an environment at Sweet World where these customers can learn from each other, they can talk to each other. Obviously we share our insights and perspectives, but it's really about them and how they figure out and, and really learn from other experiences to solve what they're, they're trying to accomplish. Jim, top level message to customers, next 10 years, what's the NetSuite? 20 mile stair look like for you guys? You know, the great thing about NetSuite is we've been around almost 20 years. We've been on the same mission, the same product, and we look at the confusion that's out there in the marketplace. I think people feel very grateful that we're on the path and they know where we're going. 
and we're delivering them real value, real deliverables, and we're not forcing them to change their business. They change, we change for them, not the other way around. And from a tech perspective, tech enablement and mm -hmm. outcome perspective, what's the main themes of the show this year? It's mostly about our international rollout and new commerce products, uh, vertical uh, features and micro vertical features, and our intelligence assistance. Cloud, IoT, AI, software, all power in this. Guys, thanks so much for, mm -hmm. for the inside exclusive news coverage here on Oracle NetSuite, Sweet World, big announcements here. This is theCUBE exclusive coverage. Thanks for watching.